Brooklyn, which Brooklyn is everything. I mean, Brooklyn, every time I come up off the train, I'm like, Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, it's just like the best place to be. And so please introduce yourself. Who am I with? Go ahead. I am Rachel. I am the owner and chief enabler here at Brooklyn. <laughs> Spent a long time trying to come up with that title. <laughs> I, I think we hit the right note with it. So perfect. Um, yeah, no, I like it. <laughs> so if you, come, if you come shopping here, you just say yes, yes, yes. yes. No, I go, yes, but really, this is better. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. This is and better. And who do I have here? Introduce um, me. Well, since we're talking about titles, I'm Angela. I am the crafty mastermind behind Molly Girl Ooh, Yarn. I like that one, too. Oh, business cards. <laughs> and Molly Girl, you just had a great weekend up at Rhinebeck. I did. It was really, really exciting. I met a lot of really awesome people. Um, you know, we had a good time at the Indie Untangled show, and yeah, it was crazy. I'm, I still feel like my voice isn't all there. But. Same, same. <laughs> because I've just been talking so much for like three days straight. It's crazy. I was just it, like thinking about how can I just wear a sign that says I'm on vocal rest. Please don't talk. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a singer I had an too. Appearance so. on yeah. Monday. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, have, yeah. I just have to stop talking. Mm -hmm. So, um, so tell us how did you, how did you get from being born? to owning a brick and mortar <laughs> wool shop in Brooklyn, and you can leave out any details you want. that I want, and okay. Because yeah. that's a pretty long, <laughs> long journey. Um, you know, what, what, what applies to the fiber journey? Okay. Okay. Well, I was born here in Brooklyn many, many, many years ago. And, you know, I went to college, as people often do, and when <laughs> I was done with college, I moved out to San Francisco because in a nutshell, I wanted to live in a city, and I didn't want to live next door to my mother. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> that, really that, that was about it. as far as I could get. That no, and I was I've been in New York for 18 years, so I was like, let's try something new. And I went to San Francisco. I have a lot of friends there, and I quickly learned that having a bachelor's degree in comparative religion prepares you for absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and after a few years, I went back to school for fashion design. Wow, where did you go? I went to the California College of Arts and Crafts, and That's our funny. program was really unique. Now <laughs> I just want to go to college. Now we want to reset. Yeah, like we just, we're gonna do it too. Okay. Where is is it northern or southern? It's in San Francisco. Awesome. Um, they also have a campus in Oakland. But what was great about my program was it was four years of design, but it was also four years of pattern making and draping and construction. And we, you know, I of course, as probably all of us do, who aren't really into this, I learned to knit and crochet as mm -hmm. a kid from my grandmother and mother. But when we were doing these projects in school that were knitwear based, nobody in my program could knit. And I had to knit swatches <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> I was like, really? You should learn this. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward, done with school, came back to New York because there's no jobs in fashion in San Francisco. And I worked in the industry both as a, a tech designer and a regular designer. And that was when the industry was constantly tanking. So I'd be working and I'd get laid off. I'd freelance, I'd get hired, I'd get laid off. And eventually I was like, enough's enough. Yeah. And I left it, and I was in between things, and I was spending a lot of time at a yarn store, and I was knitting, and I was designing knitwear, and I, you know, just got more and more into it, and ended up teaching at the store and working at the store, and that was many years ago at this point. It became more and more clear that this was what I wanted to do. I think we all, everybody who's really into knitting is like, Oh my god, I want to open a yarn store because it would be like yes. the coolest thing ever. Right. And then you start to do the research of it and get more and more serious about it. And, you know, that's what I did. And it turned out I was, you know, able to make it work and spent a lot of time researching. A long, long, long time researching. <laughs> was it a long time? Like, it was a really long time. <laughs> Exciting bit, and you're like, yeah, oh, right, right. Right. I yeah. have to like, you know, plan it out. Paperwork and, and math and spreadsheets and a lot of spreadsheets. Actually, a surprising number of spreadsheets 
of stuff that I never thought I would need a spreadsheet of. Like, like yeah, I did example. spreadsheets of all the yarn contents and all the yarn weights of everything I wanted to have. Oh, so you could tell, so you could make sure you're diversified? Exactly. Mm -hmm. like, like the stock market! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And what else? <laughs> you know, and that really kind of tells you a lot. Like, I knew instantly what kind of, I mean, I knew before I was doing the spreadsheets what kind of store I wanted, but doing all those spreadsheets kind of made it really clear how it could work and mm -hmm. if it could work. Mm -hmm both financially and just if there was stuff available. And right. so before you started on the spreadsheets, answer, what kind of store did you want? Uh, so, I, I wanted a store that was the kind of store me and my friends wanted. Exactly! <laughs> which is <laughs> what? Which was, I mean, me and my like close group of nigger friends, we're, we've all been doing this for a while. We're pretty jaded when it comes to product and seeing stuff. We all have stashes. Mm -hmm. But you walk into a store and you see something and you're like, I have to have it. And that's what I wanted this store to be. That somebody would walk in and be like, yeah, I really don't need yarn, but oh my God, I've never seen this in person before and it's amazing. I have to have it. That's good. You know the yarn stores you go into and they still have like everything in plastic yeah. Yes. What is happening? Yes. I can't imagine if it's we in the don't plastic. want that. And I mean, I know they'll have like the one skein yeah. down, but it just doesn't look. No, it doesn't. Good. No. It doesn't inspire yeah. you. And this is such a clean. I mean, we'll do a tour later, but this is such a clean, open mm -hmm. space. And the white was key, right? The, the white yeah. was key. It's technically not white. It's actually gray. And my family and everybody teases me that every time I had to choose a color for something, I just chose gray. Well, because like, just a, make it gray. Because it's a neutral. Like, I mean, it's okay, a neutral, but it goes with everything. It makes all the colors pop. pop. And it's right. And it gives you a contrast without, you know, right. interfering. Yeah. And it without being hopefully <laughs> will not feel dated in five years. You know, right. Well, right. Okay, so what else? Anything else? Because, I mean, I think that you defined it perfectly. Yeah. And oh, it was also really, really important for me to have as much and as many indie small companies and local companies as possible mm -hmm. which i don't know if there's a lot in new york i mean it, it was it can be harder to find it here in new york but mm -hmm. just because it, it gets very expensive to do it but yeah. that's i knew from even before i knew i had a store i knew i wanted angela my girl. <laughs> yeah <laughs> People who can't, you know, get to these different festivals or exactly. events, they yeah, can actually yeah. come here mm -hmm. and have a mini experience. Of and that thing. was a lot of what was behind choosing to do a lot of fiber. Mm -hmm. Was there are no other stores here in New York that do fiber and spinning stuff in a significant way, mm -hmm. and it's frustrating. Like especially once you go to someplace like Rhinebeck or mm -hmm. you know Maryland Sheep and Wall or even smaller local festivals, you're like, there's so much gorgeous fiber out there. Like why can't I find it mm -hmm. locally? Um, and something that I'm just realizing talking to you is if I were in this neighborhood, and I kind of am, like I mean it took me 40 minutes to get here, but that's normal for me on the subway. Like I take the subway all kinds of places. Yeah. But just to know you and know that that's your philosophy, like yeah. that makes me feel like if I'm going to make a 30 minute trip to a yarn store, because there's many within 30 minutes, right. maybe I come here, I definitely come here, I should say, <laughs> because I know that, that that's your philosophy and I know that that's what you're going for right. and that's how I shop too. So that's really cool. So that was a good transition though. It was. Yeah, but, see, see, I, I planned Look that. that. We're not <laughs> working very nicely. We're not working on a script here, people. We're just, we're knitting <laughs> ourselves. So talk about, uh, so how did you meet? We met at when the first time I did Vogue Knitting Live in Manhattan, and I, I remember Rachel when, coming up to when me. When was that? 2013? Okay, so just was it 2000? It was. We're about to do. 2016. I feel like it was two years Maybe ago. Maybe 2014. 14. 14. I'm bad with math. Okay, so <laughs> it was just two years ago. So yeah. she came up to your booth? Yep. Yep, and we had a conversation, and then the next year, this past year, I did it. She came up to me and she was like, so I'm opening a yarn store. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> what are you saying? Like, 
So you had, you, it wasn't, well maybe, were you in spreadsheet phase yet when you first met her? So prior to the spreadsheet phase was the really long list phase, which was <laughs> where I probably had 60 or 70 indie dyers that I found various places. Mm -hmm. Ravelry, my personal stash, friend stashes, you hear about them, and I had a list. And I contacted all of them to see if they would do wholesale. And a good portion didn't, a good portion did, and then I worked from the ones who would, we weren't off of that. Yeah, because that's true. Yeah. Do you do wholesale? Yes. And so, okay, so talk about that, because that's something I don't totally understand as a consumer. Because I'm just like, I have to save up all the money and buy the yarn, right? <laughs> so how does that work, like when you're, especially when you're indie? Well, it's it's a totally different, you have to be in a totally different, you notice how I put my knitting because I can't I know. my hand. She couldn't, she, yeah. <laughs> I put knitting without um, You can't, it's like a totally different mindset that you have to be in because you're not just buying yarn for you to dye and sell and you have to know what people want. It's, you have to be prepared to purchase I don't know how to talk about this. I don't well, know how to talk about okay, let me ask you better questions. Do you have so when you say will you oh, sell yes. wholesale and you say yes, right. are you asking for very specific colorways? So it's it's, or it's a couple of differences between selling wholesale and yeah. retail. One is a matter of quantity. Mm -hmm. Like Angela has to be able to give me 40, 60, 80 right. skeins all at once. Yeah. And it needs to be one base, several bases, whatever. And she needs to be able to turn that around in something like a reasonable time yeah, that the store yeah. can use it. Like, right. I can't place an order and getting it six months later makes it really hard to like right. plan. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're ordering something that's heavier and you want it for the fall and the winter and then I said, did you want April 1st? Right. <laughs> Nobody's going to want it in June and July because it's heavier and they want to get summer things. And you're willing probably to do it wholesale because of the quantity that she's purchasing. Right. right. It, is a, it is a quantity. It, um, that's how, I mean, that's how all production industry makes their money is by doing wholesale. It's a uh, matter of quantity, you know, versus, over profit. And, versus, so, and she saves time, like... Versus mailing out one or two stains, right, you know, right. doing that it's, 50 you know, times a week yes. versus giant just box. sending me a big box. Sending a giant yeah. box. <laughs> or several boxes. giant boxes. boxes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's happened more than once recently. Um, so let's talk about how you got started in the business. Like what's your, from birth to now. Um, well, I started <laughs> from birth points. to now. You skipped a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, the autobiography is coming out, so <laughs> you have to wait for the full story. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, so, m everybody in all the women in my family going back have were knitters and crocheters, and I have it on both sides. And it was never something I was interested in ever, ever. And then um, going into my, I guess my junior year, no, my sophomore year of high school. Somebody I knew learned to knit, and I was like, well, if they can do it, I can totally do this. I can totally do this. And so I started knitting and like knitting a, like and knitting. Like it was a friend? Knitting. Yeah, yeah. And did you feel competitive at all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can totally, totally do this. Um, and so I was just knitting and knitting and knitting, and about a year later, two years maybe, I had knit so many scarves and hats, my mother was like, you need to get this out of my house. She signed me up for a craft show, and... <laughs> I was hooked and I did craft shows for years and years like and years. Selling. Like selling finished things. Mm -hmm. And then I was having trouble just competing because there were, I was using like nicer yarns and so my stuff was, you know, priced. Yeah, more expensive. Accordingly. Mm -hmm. And there was always a couple of vendors who had their red heart super saver scarves for $5 mm -hmm. and I just couldn't compete with that. I was like, what can I do to separate myself? Mm -hmm. So I got some naked yarn from Michael's and I was like, I'm going to play with food coloring and vinegar and it just took off from there. I have been dying now for six years. I've been Molly girl for three and a half. Um, and it's just, it's completely taken over my life and my house and it's, it's just exploded and it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. It took, it's taking over your house. Totally taking over my house. And so we, you need a new space. Yes, I do. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I am desperately in need of a studio. I'm hoping that 
we'll be able to purchase our first home soon and then I can get a, like a separate studio space built within the home mm -hmm. like we can convert the garage or whatever because so I want to know what is it like now like what's a day in the life no. <laughs> it's, I, well, especially if it's a dying day. Dying days are very long days. And I, depending on my die load, sometimes I die six days a week. Sometimes I die three days a week. Sometimes I die one day a week. Um, it's, it's, and it's very intense manual labor. It's long days. Yeah. But I get up. I probably had yarn soaking overnight to get ready to die. I, you know, do my first batch, have breakfast, do my second batch, do my third batch, have lunch. And so how do we do a batch? Can you just give us some... Bullet points. No. <laughs> how, how much? Do oh, you do is, that, is that secret? That that yeah, I don't. I I, I don't. Oh, it's a secret. That I don't want to talk about. Oh, it's a secret. <laughs> well, it's not a secret, but it's it's proprietary. proprietary. What does that mean? So, what does that mean? Proprietary. It means, proprietary information. So I mean, you can talk about. I'm, but different diaries have different methods. Right. We all have oh, different I techniques. See. Okay. I was completely self-taught. I taught myself. I literally was like. Okay, let's. How does the science of dyeing work? You need dye and you need acid and heat. Okay, mm. I can do this. And then I just taught myself. I've never taken a lesson. I've been asked to teach, but I'm like, I, I don't. I, I, I taught myself. Nobody else dies like I do. I want to keep going for oh, now. Oh, cool. <laughs> so how much do you dye at once? Like, in a, on a really good day, I can get about 100 skeins done in a day. For it's a lot, right? For, it seems like a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. My average batch runs about 30. I try to limit myself to two batches a day. Some, I do three more often than I do two, and some days I do four or five, and I'm up until 2 a.m., but sometimes you just gotta get it done. That's mm -hmm. part of being self-employed. You work all the time. <laughs> all so the, the 30 time. skeins, that's all the same dye lot, like all the same colors? Um, it depends. It depends on the color. It depends on what I need it for. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I can do multiple colors at once. I don't have to. It's I have a bunch of different vessels that they go in them, mm -hmm. all different sizes. It really just depends on what needs to get done. Like if I'm doing a sh order for a shop, like Rachel just ordered 40 skeins of her um, exclusive colorway. Ooh, I which I want to see. <laughs> do we have it here? Oh, I want to see that. Now, yeah. when you said you have vessels. Do the vessels get put away or are they always out? They're always out in the mudroom. They live in our mudroom. Okay. So that's good. It's in mudroom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're very lucky the house that we rent. We have the whole house and it has enough room and enough part of the picked it. What? And so why do I need a black light? Uh, because the colors that are under the gray fluoresce. What? Yes. Okay, let's get close to the this. It's fun. Oh my goodness, look at this color. So it's called No Sleep Till Brooklyn. That's awesome. <laughs> look how beautiful that is. And so did you have a hand in like which color she used? Like, oh yeah. Yeah, we, we, like we emailed back and forth and mm -hmm. you know, I gave her a lot like, well, of what about this? And, and then, she was like, well, I like that, but I don't like this, this about it and I don't like this about it. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, how about this? Well, I don't like this about, okay. Okay, I was a little... <laughs> no, no, you are, you are super cool. Two, two batches is, or two, like, runs is usually what it takes to yeah. get it down. And it's when it was reasonable. perfect, you just knew. Oh, yeah, no. And so if I put a black light, man, I have, I have a black light flashlight. And so then... I put in my show bag. I this will, me. under, not the gray, but the, the pink and the purple underneath will fluoresce. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. Do you talk about that in your in your booth when people come? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. I need to make a tiny little like black light like box. That. Yes. My yeah. my fiance likes to. He'll take one of my project bags and he'll put a couple of the fluorescent skeins in there and he'll stand in the middle of the aisle and be like, "Do you want to see what's in my bag?" I'm like, "You have this stuff." <laughs> <laughs> it's a little creepy. It's a little creepy, and people are always just like, "Do I, I guess?" <laughs> I'm like, "Honey, <laughs> do I want to see?" Like, no. But everyone will be able to see you in person. Too, yes. When you're, so we're... We're doing a trunk show. Doing, oh, you are? Well, she's okay. doing a trunk show here. Yes. When, when is it? The uh, 29th and 30th of October. It was the weekend before Halloween. Oh, good. So we're going to get this out then before. So yes. Both, okay. Yes. Okay, cool. And um, so what will happen if I come to the trunk show? Talk about it. There will be lots and lots of Molly Girl yarn here. <laughs> <laughs> and my sparkling personality. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um... Yeah, it'll be fun. I imagine we'll play music. There's we'll a, play music. There's a sure. Molly Girl radio list on Spotify that I've oh, cool. compiled for people because all my colors are named after songs. Is so, this a song? Yeah, it, this is a Beastie Boys song. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That is really fun. Okay, so do you have, is this, this is Molly Girl? Yes. And this is when it when it's all caked up, how yep. it looks. What are you working on today? I'm working on a sample of a pattern that I wrote that I sell kits for. Mm -hmm. um, that I just, this is a brand new rock star. I just debuted at um, Frying Back this weekend. And so I had to put all the kits back together and make new samples for all of them. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, fun because I get to knit with my own stuff and I don't usually that's, get to knit with my own stuff. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. When you own a store or own a yarn company, basically, all your knitting time is samples. samples. Right. You do not make something that's not Aww. a sample. Yep. Can you like choose one month a year to be like, this is my no. month? No. I mean, <laughs> I, have, I have concurrent projects going on. Like, I had ankle surgery in June, and so while I was recovering, I started a big, giant, bulky sweater. Mm -hmm. And so I have it, it comes down to here now. And I haven't been able to work on it since I was able to start working on other things again because mm -hmm. it was just stuck in that back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. So once I, maybe, maybe over Christmas I'll get to work on it again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody shows them. My life is not like this at all, but I do have certain, like, deadlines for things, either as gifts or yeah, yeah. I work with my yeah. brand yard, so I'll have deadlines there. But I'm the same way. I, I have this project picked out that I'm like, January, like, as soon as everything's mm -hmm. done, like, I can't yeah. wait to do this project. What are you working on? The six. I am awesome. working on. It's called the Greta hat. It's a colorwork hat, and it's a free pattern that comes with the Lux or Lux Adorna little kit. She sells. And she changed really her name. Cute. She used to be Pepper did. Pepperberry. She yeah. used to be. She was Pepperberry. The first year we met at Vogue, she was right. there, mm -hmm. and she changed it. And she, she threw me off it. a little bit. I know. And these kept her logo though. Mm -hmm. These. This hat is designed to go with. This oh, it's so pretty. You know, I have a kit of hers for the, I think it's called the Leela Cowl. I don't know if you've seen that. Sita. And it's kind of, it's, yeah, I think it's a kit kind of like that. And I am, oh no, it's actually a lot of these. It's kind of like these colors, maybe that one. And I got stuck on it and then put it down. I need to get up again. Yeah, but I need to, because I'm a little better at knitting now, so I think maybe I'll understand it. Yeah, what, again. that's always the way it is in knitting. Yeah. Like, what confused you a year ago, you pick it up again, you're like, why did I have problems with that? Yeah, exactly, so I, I love her stuff. Her stuff's great. And yeah. people feel, I think sometimes, like cashmere is such an investment, and it's nice that there's a kit. It feels yeah. less. And you get yeah. a ton of colors with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know you're going to use it all and not have all these little cool, like leftover little bits biddies. Like, and yeah. you're like, well, I have to use them because they're cash. <laughs> I love this. So this is a sample for the store. Yep. Yep. And so all you knit all of, everything I see you knit. No, I did not. I personally did not knit everything. I knit most of it, but not everything. Mm -hmm. no. Now, do you guys want to leave us with any closing thoughts before we go on a little tour of the store? Anything? Um, no. I'll put, all your links, I'll put all your links down below, so you can check down below for links and stuff, and about the trunk show. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you if someone is watching this who wants to open a store or start a what would you call it? an indie an indie dyeing business an indie yeah. dyeing business yeah would you have like one bit of advice for them? I mean, you've given a lot of good stuff so far. Yeah, but maybe one parting tip. It's um, don't do it. No. <laughs> No, it's um, make sure you do the math first. There's, That's yours too. It's a lot of it's, and you really have to be careful because it's one thing to just go out and buy a bunch of naked yarn and start dyeing it, but it's you have to, you know, if you really want to make money off of it, you need to watch your profit margins like a hawk. You need mm -hmm. to make sure you're not spending too much on this and not enough on this, and, and it's and you it's have to math. like start out paying yourself because if you yeah. don't start out paying yourself, you're never gonna pay yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because you put all your money back into the business, mm -hmm. and if there has to be a percentage for you, right? I mean, be. you're even if this is fun, we're not doing it for fun. Right? Yeah, this is our job. There was yeah, somebody I talked to once, and he's like, our if, job. <laughs> he's like, if you're not making money off of your hobby, then it's it's really just a hobby. You can't yes. call it a business. It's a hobby if exactly. you're not making money off of it. Exactly. And I think it was Michelle Wong. I was watching one of her videos, and and they were discussing free the sort of the free pattern phenomenon mm -hmm. on Ravelry and and just sort of how some people you know I think they have this complex that it's just a hobby but you have a talent and you have a skill yeah. and so charge for your pattern you know even, even if it's right. three dollars spend, like, yeah. spend the charge. time make it as good as you can make it mm -hmm. and then charge for it don't, yeah. don't put something out there 
just because you can and yeah. charge it for free. Like, and, I mean, I, and, I, and I get like free right. pattern with the kit. Like I totally right. get that. That's, right. It's different. And That's you can also different. buy the pattern. Right. You know, if you don't buy right. the pattern. It's just yeah. that if you buy the kit, right. you get you it. Get, right. You yeah. get the pattern. So, so yeah, so I like I like that and I think that, you know, this I think this industry is growing. Would you agree? Yes. This definitely. Industry is growing. Yeah. It definitely growing in different ways than it was growing ten or fifteen years yeah. ago. So we need to like make it not a hobby. Yeah. Yep. Hobby and get we'll ask for hobby. payment. Get paid, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Have fun. Teachers need to get, get paid. Yarnies need to get paid. Designers need to get paid. Dyers like to get paid, paid. Need to get paid. Need to get sometimes. Get paid <laughs> and shop local and shop shop, and shop, shop small. I'm all about yeah. support small yeah. businesses. Support local businesses. Shop small. Yes. And that's all makes a difference. That's where you find the cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I totally believe that. Yeah. So thank you, ladies. Thank, thank you. you for having us. It was a pleasure. Thank you for hosting. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening and let's go on a little just a little tour of the shop. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. Sounds good.